there's different communication that takes place. I always think of a three ball 50-50 tank like the beginning of a thought pattern because it's like an artificial intelligence. Uh, the balls are in this location right now, but you know, three hours from now they could all be grouped over on this side or you know, two could be over here and this one here. Um, this is a key Bacardi. After uh, Equilibrium, I did a show called Luxury Degradation. And uh, this is 1986, and I uh, wanted to work in a new material. And I was walking down Fifth Avenue, and I, I saw a, a ready-made uh, Jim Beam uh, decanter train. And I thought, you know, this would be a wonderful object to uh, transform and put into a different material. And when I started to think about this and incorporating into a work of art, I started to just look at the advertising and the things that caught my interest. You know, I think the only thing that an artist can do is, uh, you know, follow their interest and uh, focus on that interest. And uh, that's really the only thing uh, that you can do. And if you do that, things become quite kind of metaphysical. So when I, I started to notice that advertising targets people at their income level and uses different levels of abstraction uh, on the viewer. So I associated that with objects and I put them in stainless steel. I wanted to work with an intoxicating uh, material. You bring it to a polished surface and you know the room can be upside down. Things become disorienting. And it's a fake luxury. It's not a real luxury. It's not silver. It's not platinum. You know, you could, uh, it's what pots and pans are made out of. And uh, so it's proletarian. But uh, this was a, uh, how advertising is directed at $10,000 uh, income and lower in 1986. And the form of abstraction was really like, you know, take your weekly paycheck and gamble and take things as they come and... Uh, you know, maybe just like some subliminal seduction could be in uh, the ice cubes or something, but uh, it's really just the abstraction of gambling. Uh, a lesser uh, economic object was my fisherman golfer, which is a bar tool kit. Everything in luxury degradation is based on alcohol because it's based on basically that advertising and society wants you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and uh, to make as much uh, economic and political uh, wealth as you can. But at the same time, they're setting you up to uh, debase you and uh, to take all that wealth and uh, uh, power source. And uh, they do that through uh, you know, having degradation come in and through uh, the pursuit of uh, luxury. And so we're kind of paralleling the alcoholic and the demise of the alcoholic here. As the alcoholic becomes more and more dependent and more involved in abstraction, as we move up economically, we're becoming more and more dependent on the pursuit of luxury and being hit with heavier doses of abstraction. Uh, this is the Jim Beam J.B. Turner train. It's seven-fifths of Jim Beam bourbon. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is a great Duchampian object. How can I transform it and maintain its soul? Because the alcohol is the soul. And so I realized, you know, I'll, I'll take it to a foundry. I'll recast the porcelain and the plastic into stainless steel. And I wanted this proletarian uh, intoxicating material. And it turned out that stainless steel was the only thing that would preserve the alcohol. That's what they use in the, uh, the piping at the distilleries and in the vats. Uh, so if you lift off the smokestack of the engine, right there is the tax stamp seal. And that's the interface to the soul. If you slide open the door of the baggage car or lift up the log of the log car, you'll see the stack, uh, the tax stamp seal. And again, that's the interface. Uh, I always thought if somebody wanted kind of uh, a lesson, 101 in art abstraction, you'd just break the seal and drink the liquor. But uh, it would be ruined as a work of art. Uh, as we're moving up economically, the train represented the middle class in the luxury degradation. As we're moving up economically, we're around $35,000 income in 1986. I took a train ride from the Bronx and from Harlem and from uh, lower class uh, income areas uh, to Grand Central Station, where in New York they hit their highest uh, economically uh, based audience. And uh, so here, now we start to have abstraction where bottles are going through glasses and you know, the uh, bottles cutting through space like the train uh, through space. 
And all the paintings babbled like uh, the babble of an alcoholic. Maybe one's uh, a Kia Bacardi and uh, another one's, you know, come through with taste, quote, Newsweek. Another one, I could go for something Gordon's. And and at the highest end of the economic uh, level, I showed the Baccarat crystal set, which was originally a glass Baccarat set that I uh, cast in uh, stainless steel, brought to a mirror finish, and... uh, and polished it. Several of these pieces that I look and show tonight are in the Moderns collection. This is one. And at the highest income level, a forty-five thousand dollar and up income level in 1986 was uh, Frangelica, uh, Stay In Tonight. And this is just like a wave of liquor. You know, it's sexualized. Uh, if you look at the wave, and somebody's just kind of lost in their own thought pattern. They don't even communicate socially anymore. Uh, after luxury degradation, I uh, continued to work in uh, stainless steel, and um, I did an exhibition, a group show at the Sonnenbein Gallery, and it was kind of referred to as like Neo Geo because there were four artists, uh, myself, Peter Holly, uh, Ashley uh, Binkerton, and Meyer Weissman. And I showed a group of ten works there, and I really wanted to show what the freedoms uh, that artists used since the time of around the French Revolution, of when artists stopped working for the direct uh, patronage of, uh, of the church, or uh, where they could really make anything that they kind of wanted to, how they used this freedom. But Bob Hope was there, really a, a symbol of uh, art in the hands of the masses. And I, I never thought Bob Hope would tell a joke because he subjectively you know, thought that it was funny. You know, he would choose a joke that the night before got the biggest laugh to come out with uh, uh, the next evening. And on the other side of kind of this panoramic view, I had Louis the Fourteenth, And uh, Louis was a, a symbol that if you put art in the hands of a mass, uh, pardon me, if you put art in the hands of a monarch, that, uh, you know, eventually it would reflect their ego and become decorative. And it was the same with uh, the Bob Hope that if you gave art to the masses, it eventually would reflect mass ego and become decorative. The whole time I was uh, alluding that if you would give art to Jeff Koons, uh, eventually uh, it will become reflective of my ego and decorative. Eventually this is what happens. Uh, the rabbit was one of the, uh, the objects in that exhibition. And I really wanted to show with the rabbit, that was artist fantasy, you know, uh, like Dali, but uh, I wanted to um, show my own history of working with the ready-made uh, in this Neo Geo show. A lot of people, it was a new audience for me. Uh, Ileana Sonneben, it was a more international gallery. People weren't familiar with my inflatables, and I wanted to show my history back to that first image that we looked at, the inflatable uh, bunny and flower. And if the rabbit's iconic, I think that it's because of the you know, the many different uh, layers that it has, the different polarities uh, that it has. You can look at it, and it can be a symbol of resurrection, Easter. Or I grew up in Pennsylvania. People would always put these out in their yard at Easter time. Uh, or it could be a symbol of Playboy, the Playboy bunny. Uh, it could be like an orator. You know, right here, the microphone to my mouth right now, the carrot, it's like an orator. Uh, it's like a masturbator with the carrot to the mouth. And I love to uh, also look at the rabbit compared to the Venus of Wellendorf because they're very, very similar. And uh, they share a lot of similar attributes. If you think of the Venus, you know, she has these tiny little hands. Uh, look at the size of the hands of the rabbit. And uh, she has a big round head. She actually tilts down towards this one breast more, and that's where the carrot is. Her mass, 